Hi again, folks. Uh, so um, Kathy is with us here, as she was, and uh, she's available to take questions. Uh, was there a problem with the video? Kathy, you're muted right now. I just couldn't see anything playing myself, but that's fine. I, I know it's in the talk, so. Okay, I hope, was everybody else able to see it? I couldn't see a video playing. You did not. No, I messaged you, Dennis, on the chat, but. Uh, I must have missed that. I just, I mean, I saw the screen with um, all of the little videos that you could open, but that's all I saw. Whoa, that's weird. I was playing it. Okay. <clears throat> that's not good. Let me see. I'm gonna have to figure this out. <clears throat> okay, well, anyway, uh, 
it, the video, I don't know if those of you heard Kathy's talk, I heard it, it was great. Uh, any specific questions? Uh, well, I, saw, I read the title. Um, maybe <laughs> Kathy could give like a an elevator pitch of the talk. <laughs> Sure, I think the elevator pitch is that, you know, a lot of computational biology problems, um, people run on fairly, well, on shared memory machines. And so this is looking at taking some of those algorithms, which are very irregular and mapping them onto distributed memory and using with fine grain one-sided communication. And so it looks at things like hash tables and uh, counting data structures, histograms and uh, graph algorithms and things like that. And that's how we're using what, what we're doing to map them onto scalable machines, like including exascale machines and looking at uh, problems in microbial uh, genomics, metagenomics that are multi terabyte data sets, um, which don't fit on a single shared memory node. So anyway, I found it great and I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> and I deeply apologize. Something I must have done wrong with terms of uh, sharing the video. So I'm going to try to go to Judy's video. This time I've set it up so that Judy's video could be already start ready to start. Maybe that's what I did wrong. And um, this looks like it. Let's try that one. Now yeah, I'm going to that one works. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, well, anyway, this one's working. And, uh, yeah. Oops. The voice isn't coming through clearly. What, what? I'm sorry, there's something wrong. The volume is very low. Okay, let's see if I can adjust it. Oh, my, it's maxed out there. Hang on, let me see if I can. Find a different volume control. And let me start it again. And uh, I should probably also mute myself. So I start it. Is that better? No, the voice is still very low. Uh, maybe because I need to mute myself. Wolfgang, can you mute yourself? Yes, I mute myself again. Yeah, so what happened, uh, Dennis, is uh, you were unmuted and we heard uh, Judy's voice. Yeah, now we're not hearing it at all. Yeah, I think there's a Zoom option to basically relay the audio. Probably what we were hearing before was coming through you, your mic, maybe. Reading the Zoom help 
Dennis, and it, it claims when you click the share screen button and you choose which program or desktop you want to share that there's a share sound option in the bottom left corner. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that, but maybe worth a try. Hello, I'm Professor Judy Fox from the University of Virginia. Of course. Today, I will introduce to you a new hybrid workflow that enables applications to execute code and protect sensitive data. Security and privacy are key issues in big data processing and analysis. Organizations, public or commercial clouds, curate a huge amount of data sets. Often high value data contains personal human genome, health record, and financial information that is identifiable from individual human beings. Data privacy has significant social and economic implications. Privacy preserving computing addresses the issues with regard to application with secret data. It will protect the code and data from cyber attacks and unauthorized access. Homomorphic encryption is a known method that allows to perform computation directly on encrypted data. However, this method has huge computation overhead that makes it impractical for real use. In this study, we're proposing a promising alternative by using new hardware the idea is supporting a trusted execution environment and all sensitive data and processing executed in this isolated environment called Enclave. We use the risk mapping of genomic application as an example because it involves data intensive computing and also need data privacy. The idea of this research can be generalized to any field with the data privacy issues. The trusted execution environment can be illustrated by Intel software guard extensions called SGX. There, the instruction extensions create a special memory region called Enclave that protect the application code and data from unauthorized access. Any application data outside this protected region will be encrypted. There's a call gate that provides hardware level encryption and decryption when data move in and out of the enclave region. In addition, the CPU instructions will protect from software attacks at any level of privilege, as well as the hardware attacks. The SGX framework requires application to be modified to execute in trusted and clever region versus untrusted part. A major challenge of the privacy preserving computing stems from the heterogeneity introduced by the security capabilities. This can be illustrated by the hybrid execution at hardware, infrastructure, middleware, algorithms, data, and application levels. Related to this, there are also scaling issues limited by the uh, execution memory size of Enclave. We propose the high sec flow to investigate the seamless integration of the security components with conventional software environments. 
One essential genomics computing application is risk mapping. It is affected by the high through sequencing alignment. That we take the input of personal gene sequence and query against the human genomes. Because the large size of the queries and the huge size will reference human genome, this imposed a computational challenge beyond the basic pleasingly parallel computation. In such a workflow, we divide the computation into stages. The first stage is distribution, where we partition the target sequence into smaller subsets. We further build the index so that we can reference and reuse the popular reads alignment. Coupled with the optimization using Bloom filter, we can further reduce the search space. As an outcome, only the small part of reference sequences will need to be loaded into the enclave memory. The dispatch stage is where we move the data from the indexing to the personal gene sequence to conduct alignment. And in the alignment step, we will use aligners, the BWA, to do faster short sequence reads mapping. The computation of uh, alignment can be executed concurrently, and the global result be merged into SEMS file. Contrast the conventional workflow of sequence alignment. We can identify the areas of a personal gene sequence that need protection of data privacy. That incorporated into the computational task in query and dispatch, alignment, and merge. It becomes clear that risk mapping application requires a privacy preserving computing to handle heterogeneous workload. We break down the whole workflow into 14 steps. In the stages of a partition, indexing, and bloom filter building, this task can be executed in a non-security environment. On the other hand, the task involving personal sequence data in dispatching, alignment, and merge requires being executed in a secured environment. In the steps, we need a secured computation the data will need to be encrypted when in and outside the enclave memory to the file system. We can see that the workflow is divided into a hybrid to accommodate all application tasks in a common environment. And such a workflow represents many applications with data privacy issues. Performing high throughput and accurate alignment of reads requires the sequencing optimization with the active field of research. Partitioning, indexing, and bloom filter building are pre-processing steps. We have adopted optimizations such as that compact, closely targeted components in partition, utilized a surface tree array and hash table and a text-based managed space indexing. Further, utilize persist bloom filter to disk to reuse the result and adjust the uh, lens of the camera to reduce the error probability. All of these tasks are executed in non-secure environment and for one-time execution to optimize for efficiency. A major time-consuming step is dispatching where users sequence are encrypted before loading into Enclave and get decrypted. The query is conducted via the Bloom filter and only loading in the relevant subset of reference genomes. The outcome of the dispatching will be written into the shared file system with encryption. Dispatching, alignment, and merge are the steps involving input personal gene sequence, which need security and protection. We run them on score and graphing with unmodified applications to leverage Intel SGX support. 
This step could be running on single node sequentially, but also concurrently across nodes. The output of the alignment will be saved on the shared file system with the encryption, and they merge into the final output in SAMPS format. Before the sending back to the user, they will be sealed using the user's key. To understand security measurement in HiSec flow, we need to discuss how SGX Enclave can protect the data and code integrity, and how SCORN and Graphy can provide protection on file system, and what is the design of our thread model to protect secure channels, and how to establish trusted execution environment using SGX. In our security design, we targeted for protected file system and attestation for secret provisioning. We leverage SCORM or graphene as state-of-the-art shielding layers. They provide the protected file system so that all the data, input and output are encrypted. The distinction between SCORM and graphene is that SCORM utilizes containers and graphene is based on library OS. Our attestation is focused on uh, attestation plane, which provides the management service on each computing node. It can modify the graphing container with the attestation to manage the keys for I.O. encryption. To ensure the full-fledged security features, we have designed attestation interfaces for graphing SGX. This is to ensure unmodified binary code and data are expected ones. The attestation message generator and verifier will verify if the binary is the expected one. The attestation message sender and receiver, together with the local attestation service, will verify the code and the data in the enclave. To verify our HiSec flow framework, we use the real-world human genome dataset. The 1000 Genomes Project is an international research effort which provides public accessible human genotypes of data. The reference data resources has been heavily used by biomedical science community, and it incorporates common human genomic variations. Without losing generosity, we select a subset of a personal gene sequence from the 1000 Genomes project. We run our experiments on a 10-node SGX-enabled cluster, and each node has Intel's Xeon CPU processor. Our gene sequence varies from 300K to 24 million, with 100 base pairs per read. For the baseline experiments, we measure the SGX overhead from the enclave each initialization time. We vary the heap size from 16 megabytes up to one gigabyte. For the maximum size heap size, the overhead is 0.04 seconds per megabyte. The overhead of decryption and encryption from all call and e call per million calls varies from five seconds to four seconds while in contrast with the untrusted environment is only 1.3 milliseconds. The overhead are significant coming from the large data set, which may not be able to fit into the memory. This memory comes from the uh, EPC page swapping, and currently the processor reserved memory is 128 megabytes for MCLEV, and real usable memory size in our application is around 19 megabytes. To achieve the optimal dispatching and alignment performance, we adjust the partitions of a reference genome. Because the human genome data is about 3.2 gigabytes, we adjust the number of partitions from 12 to 100, and observed at the size of 80 partitions, each data has less than 50 megabytes to fit into the enclave memory size. This will avoid the EPC page swapping. 
to compare the execution time of high-sec flow versus non-secured execution environment. We run the single-end alignment pipeline in the best-case scenario. It costs 15.5 seconds with 80 partitions. In the worst-case scenario, it executes in 793 seconds sequentially on an SGX-enabled node. When we look at the detailed breakdown of the execution, the dispatching phase occupies two-thirds of the execution time, while the alignment and merge are less significant. We note that this result will be dramatically improved with the new Intel hardware with larger enclaves. This chart presents the detailed high-cycle flow execution time with scoring and graphing. On the left-hand side, we can see the breakdown execution time into secured execution versus non-secured execution. Because non-secured execution is a one-time running with partition, indexing, and bloom filter, all focus will be the secured execution time. In the secured execution, dispatch occupies most of the time. We'll focus on improving the performance of dispatch. The comparison between dispatch sequential versus dispatch parallel shows a significant improvement with parallel graphing and a parallel scoring execution. In the best case scenario, high second flow can achieve speed up over scoring for a factor of over 212 with 80 partitions. In the next step, we plan to conduct experiments of high sec flow on the latest Intel third generation scalable Xeon processors. They provide much large APC size up to 512 gigabytes, which will avoid extensive page swapping overhead. The tentative experiments platform we're looking at including servers from the Supermicro Ultra systems. Conclusions and the future work. HiSec flow is a novel workflow architecture that can schedule hybrid computing to address heterogeneity and performance issues in privacy preserving computing. We have shown using human reference genome to execute sequence alignment that achieves speed up up to 212 with 80 partitions. This is contrasting running directly on the SCORM framework on Intel's SGX hardware. The speed up is mainly achieved from the hybrid execution with process level parallelism, as well as algorithm level optimization using Bloom filter to reduce the search space. HiSec flow can be easily expanded to many other unmodified genomics applications, including the cases where algorithms are data parallel. For future work of HiSec flow, we can add new driver components to enable securely accepting jobs from different users and assign unmodified applications on demand from a pool of secure and non-secure containers. Intel has major SGX improvements with latest architecture in Ice Lake and the future Super Rapids. We will test our experiments on the new chips with much larger enclaves. In the future, we can integrate HARP and HPC libraries with the workflow using the kernel libraries to address different computing challenges. We can also integrate HARP and the HiSec flow into Intel's one API framework. Other hybrid workflows with secure and non-secure workload, other than the genomic sequencing, can be ported into the framework and scale to the highest performance for real-world datasets using a programmable API. HiSec flow, promised alternative approach, can be extended to implement privacy-preserving algorithms for many data-intensive computing tasks, including epidemiology, genome variation calling, and gene express analysis. We gratefully acknowledge the sponsorship and support that made this research work possible from the National Science Foundation, Intel, the National Institute of Health.
Okay, um, again, I apologize for the delay caused by my inability to run this stupid thing correctly. Uh, Judy, that was a great talk, uh, but I'm gonna delay questions until the end. I wanna get Wolfgang's presentation up now. And given my ability with this system, we're gonna to try to make sure that it actually, I have enough time to do it without screwing it up here. Bring the video up now, but I'm going to stop it. Stop. Hang on here. Okay, now I'm going to share the screen again. And I share sound and I start. Hello, everybody. Sounds Hello, good. Everybody. My name is Wolfgang Gensch, and I will talk about uh, the automated self service multi cloud HPC platform applied to the simulation of cardiac virus disease with machine learning. Our customers were 3DT Holdings in San Diego, together with UCSF Health Institute and the California Medical Innovations Institute in San Diego. And uh, technology partners were Google Cloud with Google Cloud Platform, Azure, uh, DCV, Desktop Cloud Virtualization for the uh, virtual desktop and for remote visualization. Then uh, the Abacus code uh, from Daso Simulia. Big thanks for all the uh, free trial licenses for Abacus. And Susan Ranger, who provided uh, yeah, the Ranger Kubernetes management platform. The team was uh, from the customer side, Jakub Dabiri, Gassan Kasab, and Julius Guccione from 3DT Holdings in San Diego and uh, our uh, cloud architect director daniel gruber and myself so let's start okay the goal of this living heart project is uh, about providing a real-time surgery simulator to the heart surgeons for repairing cardiac valve leakage with a Mitra clip device, and we will learn more about it. And uh, to shorten the simulation time from 12 hours full simulation down to close to real time, we applied machine learning. And I also will explain that in a few minutes. The focus here especially is on uh, the practical industrial usability. Uh, usually if surgeons don't have a supercomputer at hand, so they have to use, or they will use, just cheap cloud HPC. And how this works, we'll demonstrate in this presentation. So let's jump in right to the UberCloud Engineering Simulation Platform. And you see three layers. This is the application layer, which basically hosts uh, the engineer's simulation, either the solvers, just the solvers, or a whole complex workflow. Uh, in our high performance computing containers. I will explain that uh, more in a minute. And then the middle layer is the management and services layer, which we usually implement together with partners, for example, GNS system, science and computing. And when it comes to multi cloud, also together with SUSE, SUSE Ranger. And the lowest layer clearly is the infrastructure layer, uh, which sits everything on the customer's cloud environment. And uh, this approach here is a multi-cloud approach. Uh, and uh, we uh, used uh, Azure instances in our own Uber Cloud subscription for the management part and setting up uh, and monitoring health checking, et cetera, clusters in uh, GCP, Google Cloud. So just a quick look at our HPC software containers, which we are developing over the last seven years already since 2013. 
so it's not only CAE workflows, but it is also energy, life sciences, uh, pharma, and uh, you know, oil and gas, and uh, and more. Uh, any compute intensive application, basically compute and data intensive, I want to say. Uh, so the applications are pre-installed, configured, and tested in the container and then handed over to the engineer's uh, cluster basically uh, it's a fully managed service on cloud and even on premise recently uh, sitting on any linux vms bare metals openstack uh, vsphere kubernetes etc and uh, it's coupled with linux and windows clients for the end user and uh, running complex workflows and in brackets really customizable so uh, whatever the engineer has developed over the years we just take it and containerize it and then it runs on any platform so to speak uh, just a deeper look into the hpc container features very quickly i mean you know just a few highlights public private hybrid multi-cloud and multi-container single node multi-node uh, browser access with login and password sent to the uh, end user running on any cpus and gpus ssh vms bare metal linux etc etc looking down another important thing is okay it comes with cloud licensing servers uh, runs with M any MPI libraries, RDMA to bypass the hypervisor, uh, on uh, also on InfiniBand, especially fully integrated with the uh, UberCloud engineering simulation platform, and uh, also for interactive uh, and batch uh, jobs. So, and uh, one important thing here as well is uh, there's no multi tenancy. Every engineer gets her own clusters and can scale up and down, shut it down when ready, etc. And on the right hand side, you see there is a longer list of additional features. Uh, don't have the time here to go into the details. Uh, just recently, we added uh, SUSE Ranger, which sits on top of the uh, SUSE stack. It is uh, the platform for managing any Kubernetes distributions, uh, provides a beautiful uh, graphical user interface uh, for monitoring the jobs and the job status, uh, as well as the resources underneath, the availability uh, uh, yeah, and usage, etc. So uh, uh, SUSE then on the right hand side uh, enhances our existing platform here on the left hand side uh, for multi-cloud. Uh, so the user side is obviously the self-service user interface for the engineer uh, uh, using just a handful of commands uh, for setting up uh, clusters and scaling up and down and shutting it down uh, developed by UberCloud. Uh, and then running uh, batch jobs here, for example, Kubernetes uh, on Kubernetes clusters in different uh, regions. Uh, you know, for Azure, for example, could be Europe West and Europe North, depending on the availability of the resources, or it could be even different uh, hyperscalers, different cloud providers. So, in summary, for this first part, uh, I mentioned the HPC containers. Uh, they are still with this rich uh, a set of features unique and universal and are standard because they are sitting on docker but docker is only the lowest layer and uh, there are 30 plus additional layers on top and uh, running on public private hybrid and multi-cloud it's one set of tool fully integrated uh, so there's nothing to do for the engineer uh, on the hpc side on the resource side but just focusing on his engineering simulation workflow. So most important, it's running in customer's own cloud account, uh, which is often discounted, you know, like an enterprise agreement or whatever, uh, and uh, not in the uh, cloud service provider's account, uh, which happens often when there is a portal or an appliance or with the ISVs who often have their own cloud 
uh, offer. But that all runs in the cloud providers, so in the ISVs or in the cloud service providers account. And there's no discount, there's no control really from uh, uh, for, for the end user. And uh, this one here is all. It's basically the what you see on the right hand side, a rental car model with uh, some beautiful cars uh, slash containers, right? Uh, on dedicated secure HPC service. There's no multi tenancy. Every engineer uh, owns uh, his own Ferrari, right? Uh, so engineer has sole control and owns the whole stack. It's uh, fully customizable for complex engineering workflows like multi-physics, digital twins, personalized healthcare, big data analytics, machine learning, natural language processing, basically anything which is data and or compute intensive. And uh, because all of that is fully automated, uh, doing a POC or even a cloud onboarding is relatively fast. Okay, so now the second part, heart failure in the US. Uh, you see here 6.2 million in 2016, increasing 46% by 2030, uh, total cost 70 billion per year. That's huge. And that cries for an innovative treatment uh, strategy for heart failures. And one option, obviously, is computational simulations. But these computational simulations are taking far too long. You know, one heart cycle, for example, with finite elements, takes 10 to 100 hours on a workstation. You know, that was you, what usually doctors, surgeons can afford, right, uh, right next uh, to uh, doing the surgery then. And uh, now the uh, end users have developed uh, a surgery simulator for the virtual assessment of mitral valve repair device placement. Uh, and uh, we have then taken the whole thing and implemented, put it on a multi-cloud environment uh, in this project. Uh, so the core of uh, uh, this strategy here is a MITRA clip, uh, which is a recent percutaneous approach whereby the clip is placed in the mitral valve to reduce mitral regurgitation, which is kind of a backflow. Uh, uh, of blood, uh, which is very dangerous because then it circulates and uh, it can clog and, uh, you know, blood, uh, how should I say, crumbs uh, can move up to the brain and cause stroke. Very bad. Uh, definitely something to avoid. So you can see here uh, the uh, catheter-based uh, 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 repair uh, here with the clips. And uh, you see here a clip just by itself. You know, it gets uh, uh, basically uh, introduced uh, into the uh, defect heart valve uh, and uh, then uh, clipped according to the real time simulation, uh, machine learning accelerated uh, during the surgery. Okay, so uh, the computational model quickly, Abacus finite element, which is clear uh, here, uh, tested and uh, simulated uh, the left ventricle, uh, the mitral valve, the chordae muscles, and the blood. So this is basically uh, the uh, uh, ensemble uh, for the flow, uh, a smooth particle hydrodynamics modeling has been used. And uh, the models, uh, you know, for these 2,500 simulations have been created for different valve geometries and different uh, mitra clip scenarios. Everything sitting and running on an UberCloud engineering simulation platform, fully automated, self-service, on demand, uh, and uh, running more than 2,500 simulations on Google's GCP cloud platform. And uh, the goal is really to minimize stresses because when we look here on the next side, so everything, you know, red at least uh, is dangerous because it, uh, uh, these are high stresses, areas of high stress and high stress means uh, reducing uh, the time uh, this uh, operation basically 
uh, is successful and and, and uh, uh, you know uh, basically reduces longevity right uh, so the problem is really uh, how many clips uh, you know to basically repair uh, this valve and also the location of the clips so the optimum placement uh, which the surgeon then now now with this uh, real time platform can find out with uh, uh, simulations and uh, machine learning. Okay, so here quickly the machine learning models uh, evaluated, uh, compared, researched already for three years uh, for the left ventricle mechan mechanics and uh, so algorithms used among others and tested uh, and then finally applied uh, our extreme gradient boosting decision tree algorithm and cubist uh, a rule-based model where a tree is grown with terminal leaves containing linear regression models and uh, deep learning feed forward recurrent neural network with long short term memory lstm for the uh, left ventricle pressure and volume for the optimal placement of the mitra clip so there are reports and publications uh, uh, which are here on the slide so if you have the slides then you can uh, easily dig into much deeper into uh, this research uh, so the great results here obviously is uh, uh, the comparison between uh, the uh, machine learning uh, result the prediction so to speak and uh, the original simulations so uh, blue brown and purple on the left hand side here for example is the simulation and red orange green is the machine learning very similar results for cubist uh, uh, extremely nice uh, matching uh, of uh, both approaches so that uh, you can really trust uh, the machine learning accelerated uh, prediction results nicely okay so i guess this is my last slide here uh, summarizing the project uh, repairing cardiac valve leakage and uh, yes we said six plus million people uh, today increasing by 46 percent uh, to an extremely expensive uh, uh, total cost of 70 billion solution is the mitra clip small metal clip allowing doctors with catheter based surgery to repair the mitral valve uh, with minimal invasive alternative to open heart surgery. The approach on the compute side, it is on GCP and the UberCloud platform uh, and the Kubernetes management with SUSE Ranger then is sitting on, uh, on Azure. Uh, so uh, basically it's running on any cloud, but here uh, one part was running on Azure and the other part on uh, GCP Google and uh, on top, the Abacus container, DCV for remote visualization, and Dassault's living heart model. The results are, okay, 12 hours for one simulation on a powerful engineer's workstation. For 2,500 jobs, it would have taken 1,250 days. Basically impossible to do. Okay, on Abacus, uh, one, sorry, one Abacus job on GCP, we were able to reduce that from 12 to four hours and uh, using 50 jobs in parallel on 50 Kubernetes clusters and this 50 times 50 and 50 and 50 and so on uh, we were able to reduce the whole simulation uh, uh, part of the project to down to nine days and so the final result uh, is that machine learning prediction with uh, more than 95 percent accuracy now can return prediction results within two seconds and now the question how much was it how much did we have to pay uh, the cloud providers for the resources and all together this is for less than twenty thousand dollar it is just uh, the simulation jobs you do this once basically right and uh, for the prediction then this is really within two seconds here this is absolutely cheap okay so with that one thank you so much for listening 
and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to have the uh, slides, then please contact us here. Help at uberthecloud.com or Wolfgang Gensch, Wolfgang.gensch, sorry, for the uberclouder.com. Or uh, then uh, listen to the recording, uh, which will be uploaded and made available after the conference. Thank you very much and uh, have a great day. Bye bye. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> we got through one correctly this time, I'm pleased to say. Um, it, now we actually have 11 minutes left. Uh, and I want to know if anybody has any comments or questions that they would like to uh, address to Wolfgang. Wolfgang, I must say I'm, I'm always impressed by the uh, the, the amount of stuff that you managed to put into that container. And it sounds like it works well and it, it's very portable. And this is a great application. Um, the, yeah. you know, the, in, this, in the last example, you were talking about how the training, or you, you do a lot of training of the, uh, of the model. And then the, the final evaluation is just an application of the model. Is that what's, what you see? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, it's like, yeah. like any other uh, machine learning model where you train it and then you actually, you know, do evaluations on it. Is that that's good enough? Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So so the the author uh, basically as of the model as well as uh, the uh, machine learning the very different machine learning algorithms they have been evaluated by Jakub Dabiri, who is from 3DT Holdings in San Diego. Uh, and uh, uh, so he was able to basically demonstrate uh, the usability and the correctness of the different uh, machine learning models uh, with uh, uh, you know the left ventricle uh, part of the heart simulation. The whole model is from basically from uh, you, you, you might know uh, Godfather Living Heart Project, which uh, that's uh, Steve Levine from uh, Dassault System. He originated, uh, started uh, Living Heart Project uh, like in 2015 uh, with big support from FDA. And in within that large project with over 200 partners, et cetera. So these guys, the 3DT Holdings, they started to apply machine learning to living heart models basically finite element, et cetera. They took it over. They learned it basically from manufacturing, manufacturing that started about 2016. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there, are, there are quite a few. I mean, there are uh, over 20 different approaches for, you know, machine learning uh, and in very different facets. And uh, uh, Jakub Dabiri published together with five, six other authors, uh, uh, colleagues published uh, two reports about that. So whoever is interested in getting deeper into that, on one of my slides, there are the two um, URLs, you know, uh, and so you, you, can, you can get deeper into that. We basically provided just the UberCloud simulation platform, uh, uh, which uh, we developed over the last five years. The containers have been developed over the last eight, last eight years already. Uh, and, you know, turning microservice containers, uh, obviously Docker is a microservice container, but we turned it by adding 32 additional layers, HPC layers, basically, with all the HPC belts and whistles which you need. Um, into a, what we internally call macro services containers. So any complex workflow, multi-physics, uh, you have seen machine learning, but also digital twins. And recently we had a project with nat uh, natural language processing, NLP, right? Uh, which we basically simply put everything we do in, we throw in a container and we take it basically, it's a copy paste thing, right? <laughs> we copy paste the uh, uh, workload or the, the workflow environment of the engineer. And as is, we put it into the container so that the engineer then basically uh, seamlessly continues working you know, from on-premise in the cloud, et cetera.
So that's Very a little good. bit of the background, yeah. Thank you. So we still have a few minutes. Uh, yeah. Judy uh, or Kathy, do you have any further comments or that you want to share to this? Judy, we didn't get a chance to answer questions about what you're doing. I, I, I was quite impressed. I've not seen such a detailed analysis of a, uh, you know, a security framework for this sort of, uh, uh, you know, computational bio, you know, uh, genomics computation problem. Uh, how long did it take you to pull all that together? How long have you been working on that one? Not yeah, um, uh, Dennis, so that is a good question. Um, traditionally, our HPC community do not uh, focus on security. Uh, so th this comes along because of the um, genomic computing, uh, but a lot of the health related uh, applications. Um, so we're trying to use hardware level um, protection. So it's a, a contrasting the normal software level um, uh, security approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, this two and a half years ago, we started this project. Mm, that's great. That's really yeah. interesting. I didn't know yeah. you were working on that. Very good. So uh, we're down to the last five minutes. Uh, anybody have any other further comments? Again, I apologize for the screw ups and causing the delays in <laughs> not knowing about the magic button that you need to know about in uh, <laughs> in uh, Zoom. I know now. Uh, uh, now, so we recorded the session, and I will make sure that the videos, uh, especially Kathy's, because I think I was the only one that could really see and hear it clearly. And I'll make sure that it's all available as long as you're all agreed. Make sure that so you, you, you got a heads up. Uh, I'm sorry. You you got you 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 got a heads up. Yes, that's uh, right. <laughs> com compared to us, so you know more than we do. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but we will we will watch the recording. So yeah. can can could you send us uh, the link of the recording <laughs> so that we can spread it widely? Yes. Uh, I'll have to wait. I don't know when they're going to make it available. Oh, sure. Uh, but I will actually put the videos. Since I have the videos, I'll put those somewhere that I could actually advertise them myself to make sure that people know about it. Yeah, I, I would definitely advertise all three videos uh, to my LinkedIn community like Good. I did before. Yes, yeah. that's right. Very I'd good. like to do that too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I think we all have quite a large community. Yeah. Right. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we can stop here. And again, I thank the three of you uh, for yeah. your patience in this process. Uh, and um, uh, I think we still have. So, Ian, are you still there? Yeah, Ian's been yeah. listening. Just saying hello to Ian. Yeah, I was pleased to see Ian's photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. stop this, and I have to figure out how to stop the recording. Uh, I think that's pretty easy. I think you just leave. Okay, everybody. Right. Thank uh, you very much. For, for me, Bye. it's almost midnight, so yeah. I'll go to bed. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, wish you all the best, everybody. Uh, so it was still a pleasure. Oh, it was great um, hearing about uh, the. I, yeah. I worked on a heart simulation many years ago, so. I was, oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Judy, I've been wanting to do uh, more uh, genomics computations in a secure way. So it was very, I was really interested to hear about that too. I will uh, look forward to uh, watch your video. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's what we missed for now. Okay. Bye. Bye now. Okay. Bye-bye. Great pleasure. <laughs>